it was my birthday at the weekend and uh, I got a balloon when I went out for a meal and within about <clears throat> 24 hours it's quite a good visual representation of how I feel So I'm back down by the radiator, I don't know why, I quite enjoy sitting here. The lighting is terrible and it makes me look knackered, but uh, I, I, I feel comfortable here. So, Giz made a video recently talking about um, lucid dreaming, his first lucid dream and uh, I guess his journey uh, to, to learning how to lucid dream. And I was tagged in that video. Uh, to basically do the same. Now I have done videos on this before, I at the beginning of the year did a video about my first proper lucid dream as I called it. I then went on to make a sort of, not not really an animation, a sort of comic thing video, I don't know what to call it, uh, talking about that same lucid dream. And then uh, a couple of months ago, I did a video called S Seven Years of Lucid Dreaming, or something like that, uh, which basically, you know, told the story of uh, how I got into lucid dreaming. So even though I have pretty much made this video before, uh, I might as well do it again, just in case there are any new people here who won't have gone back that far to watch those videos. So I actually have quite a similar story to Giz in that I suppose my first lucid dream would have been as a child and as a result of nightmares. Now I had quite a lot of nightmares and I do recall my mum telling me that I just had to tell myself that it wasn't real, that it was all a dream and then I could tell myself to wake up. Um, and I recall having a nightmare where I was underwater and um, there was Ursula from The Little Mermaid who I found quite terrifying. Uh, she was there and I suddenly remembered what my mum had told me that this is all just a dream and because I know it's a dream I can wake myself up and that's exactly what I did. To be honest I think that's the only time I ever realized I was having a nightmare. I don't think I ever after that had that experience. And I had a few other lucid dreams as well. Um, they always happened on the weekend when I could have a lie in and um, when I was drifting in and out of sleep I realized that whatever I was imagining or visualizing um, that the dream would start to form around that. So I realised that I could uh, essentially decide what I wanted to dream about. Now when I went into the dream I didn't uh, retain consciousness so it would just be, I guess, a regular dream. But I knew that I could um, influence how that dream began. So in a sense they kind of were like wake initiated lucid dreams even though I didn't really know that I was dreaming or have much awareness of it, I still kind of entered the dream consciously to begin with before it wore off. Then it was in high school where I met this girl who um, I believe she had Asperger's and she used to collect information about all sorts of things and it just so happened one week she was really into lucid dreaming and she printed off tons of information about it and uh, I found it really interesting and I realised that I'd kind of had little lucid dreams before but for some reason I, uh, despite finding interesting, decided not to look any further into it and it was a couple years later, I think I must have been about 17, when I can't for the life of me remember why, but I was suddenly interested in lucid dreaming again. And I went on Amazon and I bought the first book that I found about it, which was uh, Stephen LeBurge exploring the world of lucid dreaming. 
and instantly I was sort of really fascinated by it and I guess what really pulled me in was it felt like a great form of escapism. Now as somebody with a lot of problems um, and somebody with an incredibly vivid imagination that has always kind of impacted my life quite deeply and not always in a good way um, I, I don't know for me lucid dreaming was almost like the next level up from that that all of these really vivid daydreams these really vivid fantasies you know I could potentially live in I, I suppose uh, you know even if it's just for a couple of minutes on a night and that for me was perfect, that was everything that I kind of wanted. So that was my sort of driving force to learn how to, to actually lucid dream. And it took me quite a while, I mean I would say I started to have little lucid dreams um, within the first couple of weeks of reading the book. Um, again it was sort of very low level lucidity, sometimes I would just realize that I was dreaming and then the dream would end or sometimes you know I'd realize that I was dreaming and I'd maybe get five seconds worth of a lucid dream um, so I couldn't really I didn't really have much control I guess and I didn't really have a great deal of awareness the dream would usually collapse pretty quickly and it was maybe like a year before I had what I've called my first proper lucid dream. Now, I did take like a six month break because at the time I was in college and I was just getting nowhere with lucid dreaming and I kind of just thought I'll pack it in for a bit and focus on getting my college work done. So really all in all, even though it was like a year later when I had that dream, there was a six month break. So I guess you could say in total it took me six months worth of practice to get to this point and in this dream I was playing on one of those toy crane machines which I'm actually really good at in real life I have a room full of full of toys um, but they were always like a, a really big dream sign for me and uh, I was playing on that machine and then it, it kind of turned into a vending machine where I just had to press a button and I'd, I'd get a toy every single time and I knew something about this wasn't quite right and it was then that I realised that I was dreaming um, I didn't need to reality check, I just knew it and at this point I always used to go into panic the moment I got lucid um, I think because it was this there was that shock of oh my god it's a dream and then kind of thinking oh shit what do I do now And which usually meant my dreams would end and I remember just running into another room and I found Rara the, the rabbit <laughs> on sat on the floor and I kind of sat next to him and he said to me just don't panic you're perfectly safe just relax everything will be fine and at this point I'd kind of lost vi the visual aspect everything had gone grey but I could still hear Rara speaking to me and you know with that I kind of I calmed down and my sight came back so now Rara wasn't there anymore, but Scott was there, and Scott is um, a voice slash hallucination from waking life. It's, it's all very complicated, I know. Um, and he was there now, and it was really, I don't know, it was really exciting because I don't really see him a great deal when I'm awake, in fact I very rarely do. Um, so seeing him here in this dream and being able to interact with him and kind of physically touch him was amazing, really. Um, so we left this room and, and we went outside and we, we both went flying, as you do. And I remember just it would be an amazing sensation of, of flying and just how amazing everything looked. Um, I remember seeing these mountains and wanting to go explore them but me and Scott ended up landing because for some reason I was started to struggle with flying 
So we landed and we found a pub and Scott suggested that we have a drink before we go on our adventure and uh, he had a pint, I had a can of Relentless Inferno which seriously bring back Relentless Inferno it was beautiful it was it there was no need to get rid of that you bastards um, and we had our drink and we were about to head off and I woke up so I've actually always wanted to continue that dream but I just never have but I guess that could be my goal to do that but anyway yes that that's kind of my lucid journey my whatever you want to call it uh, I've kind of gone on for a bit longer than I wanted to but anyway thank you very much for tagging me in that giz I very much appreciate that I now have to think of three people to tag myself and uh, hmm, I'm not quite sure so I imagine that James Space Time Badass will tag Daniel Love so I'm not going to so instead I am going to tag Ed as in Ed from Team Lucid Dream. I know that he doesn't really make videos, um, but I'm going to tag him anyway and make him make a video. Sorry, Ed. Um, I'm also going to tag Alan Bell. Uh, he runs the Lucid Dreaming and Lucid Dreaming Advanced Facebook groups. I, I don't know if he has his own YouTube channel, but I know he makes a lot of. He's been doing a lot of live streams recently, so. There you go, Alan. And lastly, I'm going to tag Charlie Morley. Uh, I don't know if he'll have the time to make a video response, but uh, I'm going to tag him anyway. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, if you would like to support me on Patreon, then feel free to click on the link below and do so. Uh, I guess I'd also like to thank the people who are currently supporting me on Patreon. Again, uh, I always appreciate it. Thank you very much for for thinking that what I do is worth supporting. Um, there is also a 20% discount on Vivid Dream products in the description below, as well as all the usual places where you can see me. So thank you very much for watching. I have been Max, aka the Rara Rabbit, and I'll see you in the next video.